right? To make sure there was the transaction, we prepare something called what? Source documents. We prepare the source documents. That means to prove the transactions. To prove the transactions, there should be a something which is called as source document. So this is similarly looks like evidence. Right? So this is the evidence for the transaction. That means this is the evidence to confirm the transaction. So that's what it says. Right? First one is identify and measure the transactions. Then second one is preparing source documents. After that, you would get what? Identify and measure the transactions. You have to prepare the source documents. That means keep in mind source document is the evidence to confirm the transaction. We will say there was credit sales. There was credit sales to confirm that actually there was a credit sales. We'll say credit sales for Kanchana. You have sold the goods for Kanchana for rupees 400,000 on credit basis, not on cash basis, it's on credit basis. So Kanchana is supposed to give you 400,000 after two or three weeks. After two or three weeks, Kanchana is supposed to give you the, uh, give you back this 400,000. But the question is, Kanchana might not give you this 400,000 rupees for you. Once you ask from Kanchana, she would say, look here, I didn't purchase goods from you. Then she would say, look here, you didn't solve the goods on credit basis for me. I gave you the cash already once you sold me the goods. So she might ignore to accept that there was a, this kind of a transaction would happen, she would reject that there was a transaction like credit basis sales. She would give you, she would might say, look here, I gave you the cash 100,000 on the same day, not on credit basis. She would argue that, okay, it was on cash basis. That means, since there could be arguments for all the transactions, you supposed to have what? You supposed to have source documents. That means we prepare something called sales invoice and get the signature of Kanjana that to prove that there was the credit basis sales. That means to prove the transactions, you prepare something called what? Source documents. You prepare something called source documents, right? Then the next thing is the source documents. Then third one. After recording it in the source documents, what you are supposed to do is you take it for the ledger accounts, not for ledger accounts, sorry. Then you record the transactions for the primary books. Primary books. So, in here, you have to be careful. First one is you have to recognize and measure the transactions. Second one, you have to have the source documents. Then you will get through what? You will get through the primary books. So the question is, what it says from primary books? So the question is, what it says from the primary books? Primary books in the sense, it's like this. As an example, once your accounting lecturer comes, you take the accounting books. Once the economic lecturer comes, you take the economics books. Once the BS lecturer comes, you take the BS books. Right. So, now you can see, you take different, different books for different, different subjects. The same thing is applicable in here. For different, different transactions, you are having different, different books. Clear? That means, based on what the transaction is, you would come across with the different primary books. So, this has been already tested for the exam. Definitely, there will be questions from here. Right? Definitely, there will be the questions from here. That means, next week, I'll be starting the paper class. So, you can see the questions that I'm going to discuss in here. Right? So, first one is identify and measure the transaction. Second one, prepare a source document. Third one, primary books. Right? Then, what I'm saying is, not a one single primary books, there are different, different primary books. Based on what the transaction is, it depends what's the primary book that you are going to use it. Clear? 
based on the transaction, there are different different primary books that we are going to use. It. As an example, I will be taking the table. Huh? Make sure that you are writing down these things with me. Other heading is accounting process. Accounting process. It's also in accounting equation cube that I shared in WhatsApp group. So doesn't matter. Make sure that you all take down this one. No, there is a one from control accounts. So the first that uh, the first the time table that I shared would have small change because I have not had manufacturing account, so there was a change. Definitely there will be the control account after this session. Huh? Once I do the primary books, you could have the uh, control accounts because without knowing the primary books with the VAT, you can't do the control accounts, right? So now. Uh, so this is so important, primary books, because primary books will be built again in control account and reconciliation also, right? So now, what it says here, here is the transaction. I will give here the transaction. Then, no worries, I will be doing the prime, the control account after this, the primary books. Huh? Then source documents. Then the Primary books. Primary books. Okay. So now this is so important because this chart is so important for the error correction also. Because now the pattern is for the control accounts as well as for the error corrections, they don't give you the transaction. Instead of the transaction, they give you the source code. Right? We will say the transaction is. Cash receipt. We will say the transaction is cash receipt. Cash receipt. To prove that there was the cash receipt, that means you have received the cash. We will say you are you are uh, the John Keys, so you received cash. Then John Keys is supposed to. Through that transaction, you received the cash. It is called it as you have to have a proof for that. You have to have a evidence for that. That is called as what? That is called as receipt. Then the relevant primary book is what? Cash receipt. Relevant primary book is cash receipt. Right? Then transaction. Next one I would say is cash payment. Keep it in mind if it is cash, you have to identify whether it's cash receipt or the cash payment. So if it is cash payment, source document is payment voucher. This will be again repeated at the paper class. So make sure you all take down this and read this, study this. Huh? Then payment voucher. Then the primary book is cash. Payment check. Primary book is cash payment check. Right? The next one. Then the next one. Credit basis sales. Credit basis, not all the sales. Credit basis sales of, keep it in mind, trade books. Look here. If it is cash basis, goes for cash receipt. If something is cash basis, you can select either the cash receipt or the cash pay. But if it is credit basis, you can't take it the cash. So credit basis sales of which goods this is? This is the trade goods. Credit basis sales of trade goods. What do you mean by trade goods? Goods you have purchased for the reselling purpose. We'll say in a bookshop, what is a trade good? In a bookshop, trade good is a stationary items. In a bookshop, trade goods is stationary items. That's the good that you purchase for the retailing purpose. Then it is recognized as credit basis sales of trade goods. So if they sell their stationary on credit basis, source document is. Sales invoice. 
and the prime entry book is sales chart. Sales chart. Right? So keep it in mind, this is so important. Two criteria should be satisfied to go for the sales chart. But it should be credit based sales. Not only that, credit based is sales plus it should be trade goods. Clear? So we will say now in a tire shop, I need your answer. Huh? In a tire shop, they sell some tires on credit basis. In a tire shop, they sell some tires on credit basis. Can we take it for sales chart? That's the question. Let me know your answer whether it's yes or In now the business is a tire shop. That tire shop having, uh, they have a transaction, so they have sold some tires on credit basis. My question is, can you all take that transactions for transaction for the sales shop? Tire shop sales, they have sold the tires on credit basis. Question is, can they recognize it for the sales job? So you have to just see, yes, answers are correct. So you have to just see two criteria. One is, is it credit basis sales? Yes, I told you it's credit basis sales. Then you have to check. They have sold the trade goods. Trade goods means items they have purchased for reselling purpose. In a tire shop, what they do the reselling, what they have for the reselling purpose. In a tire shop, what they are having for the reselling purpose. So they are having the tires, so it is what? Trade goods. Is it clear? In a tire shop, trade goods is the tires. So if the tires have been sold in credit basis, that says trade goods sold on credit basis. So also we will be sales invoice, primary book is sales shop. Right? Then, next example. We will say now in a tire shop, they are going to sell the, they are having a computer. Tire shop, they are having a computer that they use it for the business purpose. If the computer, now it's a tire shop, huh? it's a tire shop. In a tire shop, if they are going to sell the computer on credit basis, Sell the computer on credit basis. They are going to sell the computer on credit basis in a tire shop. My question is, earlier question, you said okay, you can take it for sales chart. My question is, now the tire shop sells their computer. What they use for the business purposes, they are going to solve this for credit basis. Can we record this in sales chart? Yes or no. Can we recognize this transaction on Sales chart. Others also let me know that. Right. So now you have to see if you want to take it for the sales journal. If you want to take it for the sales channel, right? You have to see whether this transaction comes under the credit basis sales or trade goods. Yes, there are two criteria. One is credit basis sales. Yes. So all credit basis. Fine. First one is satisfied. But be careful. Credit basis sales should be trade goods. Credit basis sales should be trade goods. Now, in the tire shop, computers is it a trade good? No. In the tire shop, computers it's not a trade good. Trade good means what you have purchased for reselling purpose. Have you ever seen in a tire shop do they sell computers? No. Computer that they haven't purchased for the reselling purpose. So it's not a trade good. So the second criteria is not satisfied. So you can't take it for which uh, sales chart. Clear? So identify not all the credit basis sales would go for the sales chart. Right? It should consider credit basis sales plus the item you sold should be right? The item that you have sold should be 
trade goods. Items that you have sold should be trade goods. Yes. Then this can't take it for sales journal because for a hires of computers it's not a reasoning purpose, it's not a trade good. In the tires of trade good is tires, not computers and so on. This is not a trade good. You can't take it for sales journal, then we have to take this. We have to take this something called general journal. If you can't take it for anywhere else, this is like the dustbin in the general journal. We put everything to general journal. If you can't recognize any of the above, then straight away goes to general journal. Then I will change the question. We'll say, uh, what you would say? We'll say, uh, now it's a computer shop. Now it's a computer shop. PC Max. PC Max, it's a computer shop. Right? So now, you are going to sell the, now you are a computer shop. You are going to sell computers on credit basis. My question is, can we recognize this in sales journal? Now this is a computer shop. Now this is a computer shop. This computer shop, the what we call the computers have been sold on credit basis. My question is, can we recognize this transaction in sales journal? Earlier computers that you have sold didn't go for the sales journal. Now can we take this for the sales journal? See, there should be two criteria to be satisfied. One is credit basis sale. Yes, of course, this is credit basis sale. Then you have to see what you have sold should be the credit trade goods. Computer, this time it's a trade good because this is a what? Computer shop. In a computer shop, what they purchase for reasoning purpose is the computer. Clear? So that's how it comes. See the difference. If it is cash basis, of course, first two. If it is credit basis, trade goods goes for sales journal if it is sales. Then the next one is credit basis, purchases of trade goods. Credit basis, purchases of trade goods. Credit basis purchases of trade goods. Then source document is what? The source document is purchase invoice. Then here the prime entry book is purchase journal. Prime entry book is purchase journal. Clear? See, here also there are two transactions. One, it should be credit basis purchase, not the cash basis. If it is cash basis, it goes for here. One of these. Credit basis plus the second criteria is it should be trade goods. It should be trade goods. That means something you have purchased for reasoning purpose. So trade goods. Then source document is purchase invoice and the prime entry book is purchaser. Be careful if it is only trade goods. Huh? Credit basis, non-trade goods as usual goes for the general term. Then transaction. Return inverse. Let me, let me know what the source document for return inverse. Let me know what the source document for the return inverse, please. Anyone? Then, keep it in mind, for return inverse, source document is uh, it's credit not. Return inverse, it's credit not. Right? If you don't have the table, make sure you take this for your book. Huh? Return inverse so credit not. Prime entry book is what? Return inverse journal. I'm not going to give you a separate time, so make sure you take this for your book. Huh? Return inverse. That means, this is means return inverse means sales return. Huh? This is called it as sales return. What do you mean by sales return? Guys? You sold the goods on credit basis and you got the return. So that says that's the return you have. Then next one is let's say return 
outwards return outwards that means this is sales return you saw the goods and got return then return outwards means what purchase return return outwards means purchase return clear then source document is the opposite of this that means return outwards means you purchase and return it then it is debit loan then return outwards here return outwards right if you can't take any transactions to here right if you can't take any transaction to here that means you can't recognize something as cash receipt you can't recognize something as cash payment you can't recognize something as credit basis sales of trade goods you can't recognize something as credit basis purchases of trade goods then you can't identify something as return inwards and return outwards if you can't put uh, any transaction comes under any of these that means any transaction does not appear in here then you have something called what you have something called general term there is something called general term there is something called general term there is something called general term if you can't take it's like a dustbin right it's like a dustbin basically If you can't take any transactions to one of these, straight away goes to general journal. So the source document is journal voucher. So the source document is journal voucher. Then you have to identify what are the transactions. One is what credit basis sales of trade goods. But here it would be what credit basis sales of non trade goods credit basis sales of non trade goods then second one credit basis purchases of non trade goods see non trade goods this is trade goods if it is trade goods and credit basis goes for purchase and sales charge but if it is credit basis sales of see not cash basis if it is cash basis does not matter goes to here cash receipt or cash payment if it is credit be careful if it is credit basis trade goods then goes for sales journal or purchase journal but if it is non trade goods goes for general journal right then second one is this credit basis purchases of non trade goods then we having another lesson which is called as error correction error correction then adjusting entries adjusting entries then opening entries these everything would be recognized under the general journal opening entry okay i will ask a question let me know what the prime entry book that you are going to record right let me know what is the prime entry book that you are going to record right we'll say uh cash sales what's the prime entry book that you are going to record cash sales Share your answers, please. Yeah, yeah, you can use this as sales return journal also. But uh, basically, we like we say it as a return invoice. Doesn't matter sales return journal also. You could say this one. The question is cash sales. What the prime entry book to be record? Cash sales. Cash sales. That means you sold the goods on cash basis. So you get the cash. Transaction is relevant for what? Cash receipt because you have received the cash. So document is what? Receipt. Then prime entry book is cash receipt. Then payment for electricity. Payment for electricity. Payment for electricity. What the source document? Payment for electricity. Source document is. Oh, we'll say prime entry book. What's it? Cash payment journal. Because payment for electricity means cash payments. Source document is what? Payment voucher. Prime entry book is cash payment journal. First thing is identify 
whether it's a cash receipt or cash payment. If it is not, then only you can go for the rest. Okay, we'll say you are going to record the depreciation of property, plant, and equipment. What should be the prime entry book? You are going to record the depreciation of property, plant, and equipment. What's the prime entry book? Depreciation. Depreciation of property plant and equipment. Separate lesson LK60. Yes. Now say no. Not the cash payment journal. Depreciation we don't pay it in cash. Depreciation we don't pay it in cash. Once we do in that lesson, then we will understand it. So what it says is you supposed to calculate the depreciation and take it. You supposed to calculate the depreciation and take it. It's like, we'll say there is a motor vehicle, so now physically it has been damaged, physically damaged. So it's depreciation. We don't pay it in cash no? for someone else. Look here, the physically damaged my motor vehicle. Can you take this? Please take this amount. No, we are not going to give for anyone. So depreciation is not a cash transaction. So you can't put cash receipt or cash payment. Not sales, credit basis. Not return inverse, return output. That means you can't take it for one of these transactions. If you can't take the transactions for either of these, then obviously it should go for where? Yeah, it should go for the general check. Clear? If you can't take it for anywhere else for these prime entry books, obviously the dustbin is there, yeah, general check. Clear? Then we'll say uh, Revaluation of assets. Revaluation, that means you revalue the assets. There's LK16 lesson that we're supposed to do the cost and revaluation module. So just think, revaluation model is there. So for the revaluation model, that means you're going to revalue the assets. What should be the prime entry book that you'll get? This was already tested today. Revalue the assets. Revalue does it mean? You take the, the market value for books. So cash credit, cash payment, purchases, no return inverse. So nothing to check it. If it doesn't appear in these transactions, it should go for our dustbin where? For the general term. If you can't put it for any other, good, we can identify the cash receipt, not the it's the revaluation cash receipt. You don't get the cash. You don't pay the cash. It is not sale, it is not purchase, it's not sales return, it's not the purchase return. Then of course, if you can't put for these transactions, no need to afraid, go for check. Clear? These are so important. Huh? So then uh, now we have done this. Right? Then this is the third part. Recording in the prime entry books. Today the lesson would be on prime entry books would be that just one. Because in exam they all have they have already tested this thing. Right? So then this is big that I just want to to discuss. Then fourth one is first one was recognize and measure the transaction, second one source document, third one prime entry books, fourth one is Record in ledger accounts. The debit and credit comes only after the prime entry book. Huh? Then trial balance. EB means trial balance. Then finally, you will get the financial state. Just see the tutorial so accounting equation is there. Financial state. So record in ledger accounts, you get the trial balance, then the financial statements would be there. See? Yeah? This is the process. Now we are going to strictly beyond the prime entry books. Right? So out of that steps, we are going to move for the prime entry books with the VAT. So very first thing is we have to identify what's a VAT. That means there is a tax scheme which is called it as VAT. Value and then tax. You might be wondering, so look here, is this is the one that we have implemented? No. 
have a lot of the accounting standards you all know we use it from international terms that means if you learn the lk16 that means you have learned the is16 international accounting standard 16 because even we say this is lk16 it's the is16 right so likewise that also the tax scheme that we have copied from uk right so that is using uk also so they use this system value added tax so we have copied that system and we have bring it to here so in a way so we can this is so important right? so now i'm going to start the beta right beta so make sure you listen very carefully yeah so now the very first thing is this VAT adjustment is required only for a company who have registered for VAT. This VAT adjustment is required, they have to record for the VAT only if they have registered for VAT. Clear? Only they have if they have registered for VAT only, they have to record the VAT. Right? So now at what time? So if it is not wet registered, no need of consideration of wet. So what we have done so far would be the, the accounting free. But if it's with the wet, if they are registered for the wet, right? If they have registered for the wet, then comes the question: how to adjust for that wet if they have registered for it? So if you want to register for the VAT, there is a threshold that like, I can give exactly what the threshold is. So, if you registered for VAT, that means you have to register for VAT with the government. With the government. So, the simple idea behind this is, now we will say, uh, here is Galadar. Galadar, Galadar reporting. So Galadari is registered for it. Galadari is registered for it. That is imposed by the government. It is something like this. Government wants to collect a tax called VAT because government is the party who is collecting the VAT taxes. So government is right. So government Supposed to government wants to collect what? Vet. Government wants to collect the vet. But what the government do is they don't directly collect the vet. They don't directly collect the vet. Instead of collecting the vet directly, they collect this indirectly. They collect this indirectly. Right? Not directly that they are going to collect the vet. Government will collecting it indirectly. So indirectly they would collect it, the VAT. How indirectly they collect the VAT is government says government select some organizations who is having a higher turnover, significant turnover, and they ask the organization to register with VAT. So government says any company who is registered with VAT supposed to impose the VAT system, tax key. Clear? So this is the point. Government is not going to charge it directly for customers. What the government do is, government says companies to register for VAT. We will say Galadari, they are registered for VAT. Then government says to Galadari, okay, look here, collect the VAT on behalf of the government. So Galadar imposing the tax, we'll say 10% is the rate. So on behalf of the government, on behalf of the government, Galadar collects the tax. So that's what it happens in VAT. Clear? So just see the background of this. Government don't collect the VAT directly from home country. Government doesn't come collect the VAT directly from consumers. They don't charge it directly from us. Instead of directly charging from the consumers, what they do is, they say, look here, we'll charge it, we'll 
ask the companies to register with VATN, then if the company is registered with VATN, company is supposed to collect the VATN on behalf of the government from the consumer. So, Valadari collect it from consumer, then Valadari is supposed to pay back for the government. So, that's what would happen. Clear? So, if the Galadari have collected now, the point is government is not going to directly impose the tax against the consumer. Government is not going to directly impose the tax for the consumer. Right? Tax for the consumer. So, government is in here. What the government says is look here, Galadari, please collect 10% back from this consumer. From this customer. So, government don't deal directly with the customers. Government is in here. So, directly from the customers collecting the VAT by who? The VAT will be collected by the company. Clear? So, VAT will be collected by the companies. VAT will be collected by the companies. Right? That is collected by the companies, not directly from the government. So, company is supposed to collect it from customers, then company is supposed to refund, repay it back for the, send it back for the government. So, this is the process comes in back. So, other taxes like income taxes, government directly charge from the, the public. But here, government don't charge it directly from the public. Instead of that, they say, look here, Galadari, if you are registered for VAT, collect the VAT on behalf of us. So, what would happen? So, on April 1st, Kanjana and Danushka went for a lunch at Galadari. Lunch at Galadari. So, the price in the menu, it was mentioned that lunch package is rupees 25,000. So, lunch package for a couple is rupees 25 dollars. So, Kanchana and Danushka went for Galadari to have this lunch of rupees 25,000, such as innocent couple they are. So, they just had only 25,000 rupees. So, Danushka had 20,000, then fortunately Kanchana had contributed rupees 5,000. So, that's the typical girls that they do so. Danushka has bring it 20,000 rupees, but Fortunately or unfortunately, Kanchana contribute only for rupees 5,000. That's how they collected 25,000. Addition for that, they are focused. There is rupees 95 rupees that just go for the bus fare. So once they come for the Galadari, they have seen this, they have visited their website and they have not a doubt the lunch package is just 25,000. You might be wondering, sir, how come 25,000 you know, is Galadar? Even you go and sit at there, they will charge like rupees 2,500. Right? So, they are for the lunch. The package is 25,000. Now, keep in mind, Galadar is a wet registered company. Galadar is a wet registered company. So, they started to get this lunch package. And they were tasting the lunch. Then Danushka and Kanchana, once they finish it on the lunch, they asked the waiter to bring the bill. So Kanchana gave her 5,000 rupees for Danushka. Now already Danushka's 20,000 plus Kanchana's 25,000, already it was 25,000. That Danushka is waiting till the bill comes to pay this 25,000. Then unfortunately, bill comes. Bill says sales value rupees 25,000. Danushka was delighted because they knew that sales value is 25,000 because in website it was there 25,000. But this innocent Danushka was surprised with something else. There was below the sales value. Yes, it was mentioned that, then it was mentioned that what? VAT 10% 2500 
then the total value is 27,500. Danushka was shocked and almost to have a heart attack. Because why? Now they have in just how much? 25,000 rupees value in their pocket. So they have rupees only 25,000 in the pocket because their website it says sales value is just 25,000. So with lot of difficulties on April 1st, obviously on the Valentine's Day, February 4th, they came for a romantic lunch in this Daladari market. But it's not so much of romantic at the end of the day because sales value it says 25,000. And below the sales value it says 2,500, it's the best. Then finally it says total value is 27,500, they are the Danushka shocked. Right? Now, surprisingly, now Danushka and Kanchana don't have any additional amount, they have this additional amount of 95 rupees for the bus fare from 138 to take the Kottava to Peta bus, that's all. So now, Danushka even can't speak it at least two words. Because of the shock he is having after seeing this invoice. So now she is considering whether he is supposed to pay 25,000 or 27,500. Now Danushka asked the waiter, Priyanka, to come. Then Danushka was blaming to him, Why you have charged 27,500? In your website, it was almost only 25,000. So, Tanushka is now arguing with Priyanta, the waiter, that nice fellow, that innocent guy, who haven't gone through with the bill also. Just the waiter bring the bill. Only the cashier knows what the matter. Because the waiter, Priyanta, also just passed only for the Olivers. So, he is not coming about the wet. So, now total value is 27,500. So, cashier comes. Cashier comes from Sandalata, so Sandalata told to Danushka that Danushka, look here, we go. Yes, of course, in website is 25,000, it was mentioned. Yes, so you see, look here, our sales price is 25,000. No change. Just go to the website and see, it says 25,000, and my invoice also says 25,000. So now Sandalata is explaining. So Danushka is now asking that what the hell of this 2,500, then total value 27,500. So Sandalata with a small smile in her face, she was explaining to Danushka, Danushka look here, our sales value is 25,000. But fortunately or unfortunately we are registered for VAT. Government asked us to collect VAT from each sales value from each sales value. So this is not for us. This is a government rule for us since we are registered for it. So Sandalata further explaining for Danushka, Danushka look here, Danushka look here, our sales value is the is 25,000. We are going to charge from you only 25,000. But the question is, our selling price is 25,000. Government, Gota Pe Raja Maksha, Mahindra Raja Maksha, Mahindri Pala, Sirisena, Ranil, Vikramasitha, Madam Chandrika, or whatever who is the procedure, whatever who is the government that we are having, they ask us to charge 10% on sales value. That means, government imposes the VAT through what? Sales value. Through the sales value. Clear? So, for the sales value of how much? Rupees? 25,000. For the sales value of rupees 25,000, government asked the Galadari to impose VAT of 10% from their sales. That's what happens if you are registered for VAT. If you are a company registered for VAT, what you're supposed to do is, for any kind of a sales value, you're supposed to impose the VAT of 10% whatever so practically now it's eight percent right so there is the vat of ten percent there is a vat of ten percent so now you can see this is 2500 then galadar is supposed to collect from the Danushka 27500 because government asked the basically that's what the how they impose the vat 
government or the company is to impose the tax. So from the sales value, if you are registered for VAT, at any sales value, you're supposed to charge, they will give you in the question what the percentage is, VAT amount. So we'll say 10% is the VAT. So company sales value is 25,000. Yes, of course, correct. Then government asks to charge another 10% from the sales value if you're registered for VAT. That's how they collect the VAT. That's how they impose the VAT. So 10% means 2,500. So total value is how much? 27,500. Clear? So that's how it comes. Right? So that's how it comes. 27,500. Then, then, now the question is, what's the double entry for this? Now the question is, what's the double entry for this? Now the question is, what the double entry for this? Now what the double entry for this? Now, Danushka is supposed to pay them how much? 27,500. So we'll say, you collect the cash from Danushka. This is from the Galadari side, eh? because we are not going to account for Danushka. Right? So from the Galadari PLC, now they are supposed to collect 27,500. So it would be cash if, it, if they collected. Otherwise, it should be data. Cash or data. They are supposed to collect it with VAT because government has to collect with VAT. Cash, debit, how much? 27,000. Then sales credit. Then sales should be credited. Now, Galadhar is supposed to identify the sales value as 25,000 or as 27,500. Galadhar is supposed to consider their sales value. They have to identify their sales value because now from Danushka, with the VAT, because government are, if you are registered for VAT, for any sales value, at VAT. For any sales value, you add that. VAT. Just go for the finger and see, go for the abans and see. After the sales value, they put back. Right? So they will put back 10%. 2500 from Danushka. They are supposed to identify. You uh, are supposed to collect 27,500. My question is now, Galadari's sales should be how much? Is it 27,500 or 25,000 should be the sales value for Galadari? Let me know your answer. Company is supposed to identify the sales for rupees 25,000 or for rupees 27,500. Or for 2,500, or sales value should be none of the above. We'll see. Let me know your answers, please. Others also. Yes. Now see, Galadari sales value should be how much? It should be not 27,500. You can argue, sir, look here, from Danushka, they are charging 27,500. Yes, they are charging 27,500. But out of that, Galadari would retain their sales only 25,000. Galadari would retain their company only 25,000 because this 27,500 we can bifurcate for two. One is for Galadari 25,000 is the sales value. Then the other thing is out of this 27,500 there is a sales value of 25,000. Then there is a VAT of 2,500 VAT is for the government. That is for the government. They can't keep the back with their sales. How the government impose these taxes? They are the companies to collect it on behalf of the government. So this back 10% is not going to be collected by the government. The companies put their sales value legally, they bound them to put this back. Recognize this back. So it's 10%, so 2,500. So out of this 27,500, 
just 25000 it's for the galada just 25000 it's for the galada the rest of the 2500 it's for the government it's for the government so there the company can retain is only 25000 then this 2500 they have collected on behalf of the government so now galada is supposed to pay this 2500 for the government so now you know this is the sales value this is the sale then this is quite a liability this is a liability how come it's a liability because now the company is supposed to pay how much they have already collected 2500 back on behalf of the government so now they are supposed to pay this for the government. So this is a liability for them payable. So this is what? Bad payable. Bad payable credit how much? 2000. Is it clear how it comes? Is it clear? Any questions? Any questions? If you have any question, just ask for me and just clarify and go on. Right? So what you're supposed to see is if it is but if it is not a VAT registered company, no VAT. So only recorded 25,000. So cash to be VAT pay uh sales to be 25,000. If it is VAT registered for each sales that they are going to sell it, they're supposed to impose the VAT, impose the tax. So they can't keep this 2500 because they collected this on behalf of the government, right? So it would be cash or debtors. If they have, will they, Danushka didn't have that, uh, the balance. So Danushka agreed to pay the total balance on two more, one within one week. So not cash debit, then debtors debit 27,500. Clear? Right. This. We'll practice small ones first, then the primary books that we can complete, right? So, first one I would say, uh, write down this question. the double entry. Right. Take down this question and try for the double entry and share your answer. Huh? Excluding VAT means this sales value doesn't include the VAT. Huh? This is without the VAT. Exclude means this sales value they haven't given this with the VAT. So this is without VAT. Huh? So you have to add the VAT. Exclude means without VAT. It's without VAT. So you have to charge the VAT for this price. Write the double entry and give me that. And everyone supposed to send me the answers in check.
How to get the value then? Then see, this is the sales value, excluding the VAT. So this is sales amount. How much? 50,000. This is excluding VAT. So government, what they say is, if you register for VAT, whenever you sell the goods, put a VAT of 10%. So VAT you put here, 5,000. Then total amount is how much? 55. So the total amount is 55. So the total amount is 55. Right? So now what's the double entry? You have to collect 55,000. This is credit sales. Then debtor's account should be debited 55. Debtor's account should be debited 55,000. Because from the data, you have to collect this total amount. Then how much is the sales value? Sales is the income. Income increase credit. So sales account should credit at how much? 50,000. Sales account should credit at 50,000. Then wet payable credit at how much? 5,000. So that's how comes the ledger. If the data is account you have to collect with the VAT because government asks you to collect whenever you collect this with the VAT on behalf of government also. But out of this 55, you can keep only 50,000. You can keep only 50,000. Right? Then the remaining 5,000 should pay for government. It's a liability. But payable credit, liability increase credit is 5. Clear? So that's how it comes. Right? Then we'll take another example. The question is, what do you want to call it? A bank control account. Right? Finally, we are going to prepare the bank account also. This will be this. This has been already tested with prime entry book as well as for the company. This is so required. Right? Write the transaction and get it. Thank you. 
That. Uh, question is. Sales value including the VAT is two hundred and twenty thousand. Sales value including the VAT is two hundred and twenty thousand. VAT rate is ten percent. Write the double it. Now look here, right? So earlier I told you excluding the VAT. I told you it's the excluding the VAT. So here it's including the VAT. Including the VAT is how much? So it is two hundred and twenty thousand. So now is now the sales value is including the VAT. Clear? So this is including the VAT. Earlier it was not including the VAT. So therefore you charge the VAT. Now you can't take again the VAT ten percent. You can't say two hundred twenty thousand plus VAT again twenty two thousand. This is wrong. Because you can't charge the VAT again, because it says sales value including the VAT. So this time they have put the advertisement mentioning that we including the VAT. So no surprise for the customer once they go for the Kalapari again, because this price includes the VAT also. Then again you can't charge VAT ten percent ten days and not at all. So this is. Excluding this is including the VAT. Now we have to identify in here how much is the VAT component, how much is the VAT component, how to calculate the VAT inside in this two hundred twenty thousand. This is with VAT, including the VAT. So we have to bifurcate this. How much is the sales value? This is total amount, and how much is the VAT in here? We'll take the VAT into here. How to calculate? Two hundred and twenty thousand divided by this is simple mathematics in all of us. Two hundred and twenty thousand. This is with VAT. That means this is hundred and ten multiplied by VAT is ten percent. Right? Then here it's one. Here it's two. Then this is how much? Twenty thousand is the VAT. That means out of the two hundred and twenty thousand, VAT is twenty thousand. VAT is twenty. The sales value should be how much? Two hundred. Always keep it in mind. Your sales, purchases, return inwards, return outwards value should exclude the VAT. Okay. So out of the two hundred and twenty thousand, this is the total value with VAT. See, with VAT. So we have to buy okay. How much is the VAT and how much is the sales? So here the VAT is this is the calculation 220,000 divided by 110 multiplied by 10 because this is include the VAT. So VAT is this sales value is 200,000. Then what for double entry? We'll say this is credit sales. Double entry should be debtors account should be debited 220,000. Sales account should be credited 200,000. Then 
20,000 should be credited wet payable. Payable credited 20,000. Clear? That's how it works. Let us leave it sales credit, wet payable credit 20,000. Right. So here be careful whether it's include or exclude. So in the company question also what they do is they include the VAT in sales. So keep it in mind sales value should not be with the VAT because VAT is not for the company, VAT is for the government. So sales value cannot consist with the VAT. Just take down this and any questions please let me know. Right. So I think it's very clear. Any questions, please let me know. Uh, so anyhow, I will keep going the online, keep going online class, but uh, it even physically started, I'll be doing the online session because there are some, uh, some other series students also few. So I'll be keep going the online class also physically. So my point is like, I don't think they we could start the physical classes soon at least for another three or four months. Pretty sure. Right? So next, this is fine, right? Right? Put a star mark and write it down. Right, no, we'll try it out later. So now uh, to move for the Purchase VAT, we'll put the third one to here. We'll say sales value is rupees uh, 20. You all use the calculators also, huh? To the question. 
sales value is rupees six hundred and sixty six thousand. Sales value is rupees six hundred and sixty six thousand, including VAT. VAT rate is eleven percent. Write the double eight. VAT rate is eleven percent. Write the double eight. Once you done the entries, please share your answers. Huh? So why forget this amount now? Huh? This is including VAT now. This is including VAT. So take the value six hundred sixty six thousand. So why forget it? How much is the sales value for company? Then how much is the VAT? How much is the VAT? How to why forget this? This is including VAT now. VAT rate is eleven percent. Let me six hundred sixty six thousand. Include with VAT means this is the amount is hundred and eleven. Then VAT is eleven. So here is uh, six. Then VAT is how much? Once you solve this, you will get VAT is sixty six thousand. Sales value is six hundred thousand. Sales value is six hundred thousand. Right? Then what the double entry? Debtors debit from debtors you have to collect this back, huh? Debtors debit, sales credit six hundred thousand, then back payable credit, credit sixty six thousand. So this is the entry. This is the entry. Next. Be careful in the exam also whether it says from VAT include or whether it says VAT exclude, right? So now you can see always your sales and purchases, everything should be excluding the VAT. So VAT should go for another account, not for the same. Clear? Good. So then we will. Uh, come for another one. Now we'll say now a bit changing the topic, huh? the same topic, but the background or the nature will be changing, right? So now uh, we'll say you are going to purchase. Now you sold. Now we know the galadar. We'll say we know the galadar. We had what sales? We had the sales. For any kind of a sales, we had to charge ten percent VAT. So double entry was debtors account debit, sales account credit, 
well payable account right that was the one debtors account debit sales account credit well payable account credit right that was the entry that we passed for the sale that means one of the kaladari is going to sell some goods debtors debit that sales account credit that then well payable right then this is one what is happens once they are going to sell the goods we will say now galadari they are going to purchase uh we will say they are going to purchase some will they purchase some goods trade goods will say they are going to purchase some fruits they are going to purchase some fruits will say they are going to purchase apple pineapple then the orange so and so some of the fruits they are going to purchase now they go and purchase this from cargis will they able to purchase this from cargis then they are going to purchase this from cargis will they cargis is yet another company not the supermarket will they have another company who is selling only the fruits so now uh the cargis is also registered for cargis is also registered for what Yeah, it should be six hundred six, right? Okay. So now, uh, fruits. Now, Agnes is going to. Now you are going to purchase, or we'll say, not fruits. We'll take some silly example. You are going to purchase some jams, right? From MD, MD jams, right? So MD jams also registered for what? They also registered for what? Right? So MD jam also registered for what? Okay? MD jam also registered for what? So I will tell you here last one: six hundred fifty-six sales credit, six hundred thousand wet payable credit, six hundred fifty thousand. This this is what was the entry. Then MD jam. They are going to sell some goods for you. MD Jam is going to sell some goods for you. You are going to purchase goods from MD Jam. You are going to purchase, purchase from MD Jam. So now we'll say, we'll say, now the amount is. Uh, you are going to purchase from MD Jam. So MD says sales value. Two hundred thousand. Then they also registered for that. They also registered for that. If the MTJM also registered for that, once they sell the goods, they also put the VAT. Will the VAT be ten percent? VAT is ten percent. Then it's twenty thousand. Then the total amount would be how much? Two hundred twenty. That means earlier, what happened was see the difference. Huh? This is the point you have to take it. Earlier, what happened was earlier, what happened was you saw once you sell the goods, you had to add the VAT. You had to add the VAT. Then you collected the VAT on behalf of the government. Then you have to remit for the government how much? Sixty-six thousand. That means you have to remit it for the government rupees sixty-six thousand. You have to remit it for the government rupees sixty-six thousand, right? Then, then now you can see now you are not going to sell the goods. Now you are going to purchase the goods. Now you are going to purchase the. 
now you are going to purchase the goods from mb jan or mb cordial or whatever they also register for that so once they sell it they charge the vat once they sell it they charge the vat clear now as galadar plc if you want to purchase these goods can you just purchase 200000 and purchase the goods no you can't purchase for 200000 because they are legally bounded to pay 10% tax they are legally bounded to pay the 10% tax so now the 10% tax is how much 20000 then galadar is supposed to pay how much 220000 to purchase this goods that means this is the thing you have to realize from sales you collect the vat from sales you collect the vat so now in your vat payable account see the last example in your vat payable account vat payable should be credited 66000 vat payable credited 66000 say it then vat on sales 66000 Yeah, but on sales is sixty-six thousand now. That means you supposed to pay this for government. You have collected this sixty-six thousand on behalf of the government. You have collected the debt on behalf of the government, sixty-six thousand. Clear? Once you collected this on behalf of the government, on behalf of the government, once you collected this, you supposed to pay this for the. government now once you are going to purchase the goods now you are supposed to pay with vat now what how much you are supposed to pay for mt jam how much you are supposed to pay for mt jam cash should be credited or creditors will say you are going to pay it on other day whatever will say you are going to pay it from cash so total amount you are supposed to pay how much For the MT, you supposed to pay how much? Two hundred and twenty thousand. Because they are not giving you, allowing you to purchase this just for two hundred thousand. Because Gota Bay Rajapaksa, Mahindra Rajapaksa, Mahindra Rajapaksa, Mahindra Rajapaksa, who will buy? They have asked them to, if you sell something, collect ten percent from the buyer. So this time you supposed to pay two hundred and twenty thousand. Then now you can see how much should be your purchase value. How much should be your purchase should be debited? How much? Keep it in mind always. Put a sum of it. Write it down. Sales, purchases, return inverse. That means sales return. This is so important. Ah, Karuda hari, Malda hari, Kolkata hari, Mohan Vidhir nikal jaga. Sales purchases return inwards. Return outwards should should sales purchases return inwards. Return outwards should should record record. Without that, keep it in mind. So important. Sales return inwards, return outwards. It should be recorded without the that. Clear? It should be recorded without the that. It should be recorded without the that. Clear? It should be recorded without the that. Sales, purchases, return inwards. Return outwards, whatever sales purchases, sales return, return outwards should record without the vet. Should record without the vet. See sales also see this is without the vet. Then purchases should be debited how much? Out of this two hundred and twenty, instead of the government, if you eliminate the government payment, your real purchase value is how much? Two hundred. It should be without the vat. So purchase account should be debited how much? Rupees two hundred thousand. Cash credit two hundred and twenty. 
purchase account should be debited how much 200 purchase account should be debited 200 then what is 20000 you pay for the vat look here this is payable look here carefully now there was a payable of 66000 vat for the government so government say doesn't matter no need to pay directly for the government if you have pay any vat if you have pay any vat right it could be considered as a vat payment so for the vat payable should be what debited 20,000 because now we have paid the VAT 20,000. Now it was payable earlier 66,000. Once you paid the VAT, that means here payable 66,000 for government. Now we have already paid it for 20,000 for the MD, but MD is supposed to give this for government. So ultimately, VAT you pay is basically for the government. So you had to pay 66,000 of rupees for the government as the VAT. Now you pay 20,000. So keep in mind purchases, sales, return inverse, return outwards should record what? Should record without VAT. Should record without VAT. So now you can see the entries cash credit 220,000, VAT payable debit 20,000, then purchases debit 200. Clear? So, no need to take down this example, I will give another one. So, now what I want to emphasize for you is earlier you collected the VAT, then you supposed to pay it for the government. Then you supposed to pay it for the government, 66,000 VAT payable. Then once you paid it, once you paid it, see, now you have paid this. Once you purchase it, this, you have paid this. So, once you pay this, VAT payable should be debited because for the 66,000, you had to pay for the government, but you have already paid for 20,000 VAT on purchase. Right? So, the, this is the double entry for VAT on purchases. Right? Somewhere you can take it down, but keep going the example numbers as it is. Huh? This is VAT on purchases. Double entry is what? Purchases account should be debited. Vet payable account should be debited. Then cash or creditors. That means what purchase can put away at the one minute. Give what cash and creditors should be credited. Without the disease, without the vet. Huh? Purchases without the vet. This is with vet. Clear? So take down this example and write down the double entry. Take down this example and write the double in. Right? When it's done, please share the answer. Huh?
Share your answers, please. Huh? Keep it in mind. Purchases, sales, return inwards, return outwards should not include any bet. Purchase can't be bet. Sales cannot be bet. Right? So, if you want, you can take down this also there. This is purchase account debit at without bet.
do this question and share your answers with us Share your answers. Huh? Now we have the calculator. Then the max max put that then that means that my calculator is enough. We hundred effects that are possible. Trust me. Now look here. This question B. Yeah, what it says? What company purchase goods of four hundred sixty thousand, including VAT, including VAT. So if the purchase price is this is including VAT. This is including VAT. You have to bifurcate this. Again, you have to bifurcate it. One is you have to see how much is the purchase value, how much is the VAT. How to calculate VAT now? This is including VAT now. Four hundred sixty thousand divided by VAT rate is fifteen percent. Divided by hundred and fifteen, multiplied by fifteen, you will get the VAT as how much? Sixty thousand. Then purchase value is four hundred thousand. The simple calculation that we did in the sales also. If it is including VAT, divide 100 plus the VAT. If the VAT rate is 10 percent, divide by 100 and multiply by 10. If the VAT rate is 20 percent, divide by 100 and multiply by 20. VAT rate is 15 percent, divide by 150, multiply by 15. So its VAT is 60,000. So the double entry should be purchase limit 400,000. Now you pay for VAT also. You suppose to pay for VAT also, so VAT payable debit. Debit how much? Sixty thousand. Then you suppose to pay for creditors how much? Four hundred. Clear? So that's how it comes. Purchase without the VAT. You pay the VAT. Once you pay the VAT, VAT payable should be debited because you pay with the purchaser. Then. Thought is you supposed to pay four hundred and sixty thousand. Clear? Any questions? Is it clear to everyone how to adjust the sales on VAT and the VAT on purchases? Because after this break, I will be doing the return inwards and return outwards VAT adjustment. I will be doing the return inwards and return outwards VAT adjustment also. Not be tested return inwards and outwards, but no need to take a risk. Now I will do two examples for each, so we can finish off that part. So then we can go for the past paper section and paste it. Right? Any questions? Or is it clear? Before I go for the break, is it clear, to everyone? How to adjust the VAT on sales and the VAT on purchases?
Amosh, is it clear? Lasadi? Aisha Sadiq? Right, okay. Uh, then we'll take a small break, like 10 minutes. Now the time is 11.20. We'll meet at 11.30, yeah? 10 minutes break, huh? So after that, I will be the return inwards and return outwards and finish off the wet account also. Just 10 minutes, huh?
so far what they have tested is wet on sales and wet on purchases but i'll be doing something else also that means wet on return inverse and wet on return outwards right so keep it in mind sales purchases return inverse return outwards all the account should reflect the balance without the wet the balance should reflect without the wet not with wet with wet goes for only for creditors and debtors right then return inverts i can give you what the example number is so you will take down what the example number right return inverts to be 550000 including wet including wet top payments okay right the level right the level right you just have a try on this first you try first then we will discuss first thing is why you okay this this is with wet no including wet take how much is the return value how much is the wet up if there is anyone who don't know what the double entry for return inverse this is the double entry for return inverse return without debit wet net to mummy normal double entry again return inverse debit debtors credit this is the normal double entry without the wet up so you as you can just the wet also is a normal double entry for return inverse if someone doesn't know what double entry is share your answers with me yeah look here if i get a small wet account if i get a small wet account here very simple this is wet payable account wet payable and this is the summary i will tell you what the summary is wet on sales should be credited for wet payable account wet on sales if the wet is on Sales it should be credited. See in your sales first few examples just go and check. Debtor debit, sales credit, wet payable credit. That means wet on sales it should be credited the wet payable. Then obviously wet on sales is credited. That means from sales you collect the wet and you pay for the government. You suppose to pay for the government so it's payable. So then you have to debit. Wet on purchases. Wet on purchases should be debit. 
Lopathy favors. If the pattern sales is credited, pattern purchases should be negative. Okay, now I just give me one. So now, uh, right. So return invert is debit. So very sorry. So if square payable, we were discussing it here. If the VAT on sales is there, it's credit. If the VAT is on sales, it should be credited to. If the VAT is on purchases, it should be debit. If the VAT is on purchases, it should be debit. Because per, from purchases you pay the VAT, no? So once you pay the VAT, VAT payable debited. Then VAT on sales debited, no? Then opposite of sales, the other thing is what? VAT on return inverse. VAT on return inverse should be debited. See, VAT on purchases debited, no? Then VAT on Return outwards should be good. That's how it comes. Clear? Yeah. Then you balance this off. Balance this off. If the BBM comes for this side, see, in a payable account debit side, that means it's not a payable because payable is a payable credit card. So we'll say your balance comes for your credit card. If the balance is credit side, the balance is in the credit side, this is a what? What's the uh, presentation that we have to make is current liability, we take wet payable. Wet payable. Right? If this is in debit side, we take it as current asset. That receiver. Clear? Yeah. So this is how you do it. Right? So this is the summary. The wet. So already they have tested only these two. Huh? But as a practice, I do wet on return inverse and return outward. Not sure whether they did check it. No? So in the wet account, should be credited if the VAT on sales it is credited. Then if the VAT you paid on purchases should be debited. Then VAT on sales credited. Then if there was sales return, eliminate risk. VAT on sales here credit. Then VAT on sales return should be debited. Then here VAT on purchases then credit the VAT on return of purchase. So this is the summary. Then finally, balance brought forward is in debit side. You take it as a current asset, not VAT payable, then it is called as a VAT receivable. But if it is in credit side, so basically balance is credit side, then you recognize this balance as current liability VAT payable. So it's very clear if it is VAT on sales should be credited, VAT on purchases should be debited. Since the VAT on sales is credited, VAT on sales return is debited. See, sales credited, sales return debited. Purchases debited, but on purchase return. That means return outward should be credited to opposing sales. Then this is the final conclusion. If this debit balance current asset is a current liability. Don't take it down till I do this question. Huh? Now look here. Then we'll take summary and take this down. Right? Now we'll say, now we'll say, uh, this is what including VAT. Return inverse including VAT. It's how much? 550,000. Including VAT is 550. Keep in mind, return inverse sales, everything should be getting without the VAT. 
So now how to take the VAT amount 550,000 divided by this is including VAT 110 multiplied by 10. Then this is how much? VAT uh, no, this is VAT. VAT you will get 50,000. So then here return in VAT's real value is how much? 500,000. This is how it comes. We all know return inverse should reflect without the VAT. So the double end is how much? Return inverse account should be debited how much? 500,000. Return inverse should be debited. Then see, VAT account return inverse should be debited for VAT payable. So because VAT account sales is credited to we could not put any return inverse sales returns in the upper way, went on sales to get I turn on in a return inverse with a debit window. It's about a bad payable account should be debited how much? 50,000. Total debtor settlement is how much? Now the total debtor settlement is debtor's account should be credited how much? 500,000. Right? Any questions? Let me know. Take down this answer and uh, make this ledger account as wet summary. Would they take wet summary and take note this? As it is. Huh? And any question, and if it is understood, it, let me know. Sharuk, is it clear why the wet payable is not credited? Right? Because returning was debit 500,000. See, wet on sales is credited. Then but not sales return should be debited. Sales should credit well, sales return should credit well. Bad, bad, bad. For sales credit, na, if sales for the bad, 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 you have to debit it. Is it clear? Sharuk Subai. Others also, is it clear? Still not being tested, but not sure. You look. Right. Take down this answer and take down this bet summary and take down this form. Aisha, I think uh, Aisha Sadiq was like missing for a few minutes. 
right so now take down this question take down the answer as well as take down this bet summary quickly yeah once you done just put a message that we have done yeah and then just give two minutes until she comes take down this question take down this answer and give the bet summary you are not there right All right, okay, fine. See, now the technology is so well, you know. Right, okay. Uh, so, we have done this. Then I will do an example. Then the, in group, I have shared a tube. You are supposed to do the question number one at home once you are joining for the Thursday class. I will do example first. Right? I will do example first. Right? This is the format of a sales journal. So here I would say date. Date. Then here is invoice number. Here is the custom. Here is the amount. And the web. Then here is the total. Here is the total. Right? So we will say, now sales journal, keep it in mind, you can record only what we have discussed for the sales journal. Because we are going to discuss the primary books now. So first I am concentrating on the sales journal, the return invest and purchase journal. Right? So now, keep it in mind, for the sales journal, you can record only the credit basis sales of trade goods. Not going to be changed. You can't take cash sales to me. You can't take anything else to me. Yeah. So now, uh, what you are supposed to do is, sales journal, now we will say, you have sold the goods for Nimal. You have sold the goods for Nimal. Selling price is rupees 100,000. 100, Selling price is rupees 100,000. We will say credit base is goods, trade goods. Selling price is to be 100 Right? Then, there has been, I will say, trade discount of 20%. Then, web rate is 10%. Web rate is 10%. So, we will say January 1st, invoice number is 1. Who is the customer? Nima. Amount means sales amount. Amount means sales value. Without the value, sales value. Then how much should be the sales value we have to consider here? Is it 100,000 to be considered to here? Is it 100,000 to be considered to here? No. Why? There is trade discount. Keep it in mind in accounting, always we eliminate the trade discount. Always we suppose to eliminate the trade discount. So 20% trade discount you remove, 100,000 minus 20,000 means 80,000. Amount is 80,000. Always keep it in mind. At any time, at any time, you are supposed to eliminate the trade discount. If they have given you the trade discount is 80,000, then VAT is 10%. VAT 10% means 8,000. Then the total amount is how much? 88,000. Total amount is 88,000. Clear? Then, you can see what we did was first, if there was any trade discount, eliminate. So 100,000 minus 20,000, so the answer is what? 80,000. For this 80,000, for this value only, that is applicable. So it is applicable for 10%, 8,000. We'll say there was another customer. Uh, 
will say Shanika. The amount is fifty thousand. Then what is how much? Five thousand. So total amount is fifty five. So what we are supposed to do is now we have to take the total to be. Total to be. Here the sales amount is how much? Hundred and thirty thousand. What amount is? Thirteen thousand five hundred. Hundred thirty thousand into ten percent is it? Then the total amount is hundred and forty-three thousand. Total amount is hundred and forty-three thousand. Then how we record this for ledger accounts? How we are going to record this for ledger accounts? How we are going to record this for ledger accounts? See, what's the double entry for credit? This is credit basis, yes? right? What's the double entry? Debtors debit. From these debtors, use debtors control account. Huh? That means we don't take one by one individual debtor. Instead of that, we take a one single account, debtors control account. We will discuss in next week with some more details. Debtors control account. How much is the amount you supposed to collect from debtors? Is it hundred and thirty thousand? No. You have to collect it with what? Because government asks you to collect it with what? This amount is not belongs to you. This is for government. That's a different scenario. But still, you have to collect the debtors' value with the thirteen thousand back. So debtors' account should be debited how much? Hundred forty-three thousand. We'll say sales. Then sales account should be credited how much? Sales should be without the back. See, this is the sales. Sales should be credited hundred thirty thousand. Say what? Then again, you can see you supposed to pay VAT. Now you have collected the VAT on behalf of government. You have collected the VAT. You supposed to pay this. This is the liability. Then VAT payable account should be credited. What? VAT on sales. How much? Thirty thousand. Is it clear? So that's how you would do it. So this would go for PNL hundred thirty thousand. Then this will be balance. Is it clear how it comes? So the same thing you have to do it for the question number one, right? I will give to all the formats to be. I will do examples for sales journal, purchase journal, return in, return out. But so you supposed to do the question number one and two at home, right? Then that we can develop any body when you come here. I can name. If I can name, then only name the data. How group we can share from the APJ, right? So shall we take down this sales journal format and take down this example quickly? I will do purchase channel and everything. So at home you supposed to do, but it's in the tube. Right? Take down this sales channel format and take down the ledger accounts also.
aceptar. Others also done, right? Shall I guess? So keep it in mind, trade because in that question if there are a trade discount. So you have to eliminate the trade discount and take the amount and take the match after that. Okay, shall I read this? Shall I read? Now we will take a purchase journal. Now we will take a purchase journal. Date. You also invoice number. Basically purchase invoice number. Then here supplier. As usual, amount, wet, finally the total, total, right? So, date is January 1st, invoice number 100. Supplier will say that means you have this purchase journal, that means from whom you have purchased. This is also a same. If there is any trade discount, you have to eliminate the trade discount. Supplier will say, uh, Ramesh, amount is 100,000. We will say, that is 10% again. That is how much? 10,000. So the total amount is 110,000. Then, then we will say, Nimesh, you have purchased the goods after trading discount. Right? If there is any trade discount, as you should you have to be lucky. 80,000, 20 is 8,000, total amount is 88,000. Then you take the total screen. This is 180,000, this is 18,000, then this is 198,000. Then what's the double entry that you pass for this? What's the double entry? Purchases debitor. How much should be the debitor? Purchases, I told you, it should be without back all day. Purchases debitor, 180. Clear? Then you have paid for that. Once you purchase, you have paid the that. 18,000. Then, that payable debit is 18,000. Then, creditors account should be credited how much? 198,000. Clear? So that's how it comes. Purchase debit 180,000. Then with that you have paid the VAT up to 18,000. So VAT payable debit 18,000. Then creditors account should be credited 198,000. So take purchase journal and have this, the, this thing. We can, I can give you like one minute. So keep it in mind what I required is identify purchases and sales should not be with the VAT. Because in company question, they will give you VAT is included. So we have to eliminate the VAT included in purchases. If they say purchases including VAT, like we calculated earlier. If so, we have to eliminate the VAT and take it for VAT payable or what?
दैन रिटर्न इन्वर्ट रिटर्न आउटवर्ट किया था क्या करूँ ये चैनल तो किसी में रोपोट आहला नहीं आ रहा है बट यू हैव टू दिस एंड आई विल चेक ऑन थर्सडे तो होमवर्क्स दैट वी हैव आई आस्क यू टू डू इन काउंटिंग इक्वेशन ना थर्टीन एंड फोर Return inverse. Here comes what date. Here return inverse. What the source document is credit not. Here the source document credit not. Custom. We'll say we'll take only one thing here. Date is January first. Credit not number two. Custom is Nima. So amount is let me return inverse without the VAT. Huh? We'll say without the VAT is twenty thousand. VAT is ten percent. Then this is two thousand. So all together amount is twenty two thousand. Here we'll say this is the only transaction that you have it, right? Only transaction you would have it. Return inverse not yet tested in exam huh? with the VAT. Then here its amount is how much? Twenty thousand. Two thousand. Then twenty two thousand. What the double is there? Return inverse debited to be there. Then how much should be the amount to be debited for return inverse? Twenty thousand. Return inverse should be debited twenty thousand. Uh, same will be there. Sorry, let us return inverse debit. Then we have to debit again. Wet payable debit because wet on sale is credit card no wet account. The debit is return inverse should be debited. Wet payable return inverse two thousand. Then debtor's account credit credit twenty two thousand. Then return inverse. Right, take down this quick. We have discussed the entry before. Return inverse should be without the wet. Then Bank account should be debited by two thousand. Then data should be credited twenty two thousand. Right? Yes. Right. 
Done right? Right, then final journal, then we'll discuss the cash receipt journal and cash payment. It's not that much of a case. So we can do it. Uh, but before that, I'm more concerned on sales and purchase journals because things this has been already tested for the exam. Right, with the bank. Right, this is written outward journal. Here the date. Then written outwards, what's up? Uh, what we call the source document is debit not. Debit card. Here is supply. Then amount. Wet. Then total amount. Total amount. Right? Here is return out version. That means purchase return. Huh? Return out version. That means purchase return. Return. That means purchase return. Return. Right, date is first of January. Debit note number is BJ one. Supply is uh, Sumudu. Amount is fifty thousand. Wet is ten percent. Five thousand. Then total amount is fifty five. So here we will take another one. Now the amount is sixty thousand. Wet is Six thousand total amount is sixty-six thousand. And we we'll take the totals to here. Here is hundred and ten thousand, eleven thousand. So all together, hundred twenty-one thousand. Then what's the double entry? You pass to here. What's the double entry? Return outwards account. You have to take it. Then first one is return outwards. I told you sales, purchases, return inwards, and return outwards. Everything should not be with the bank. So return outwards. You all know return outwards is credit card. Hundred and ten thousand. Return outwards is credit card. Then credit card debit how much? Credit card debit how much? Hundred and twenty one thousand. Hundred twenty one thousand pay return outwards the sum. Then, uh, what should be credited? What payable should be credited? How much? Eleven thousand pay return outwards. So here, balance number what? Summary format is return outwards. What payable is the credit? Now, purchase of debit, what from purchase of debit? Return outwards is the credit. Right. So the entry is. Return outwards anyway credited without the VAT hundred ten thousand creditors debit with VAT because you suppose to settle the creditors using the VAT then the difference is debit side is uh, sorry credit side you suppose to take another eleven thousand because debit at hundred and twenty one thousand but credit at only hundred and ten the remaining should be VAT payable credit right take down it.
is it clear how to adjust the vat not be tested the vat uh, return inwards and return outwards vat Done. Is everyone done with this? ट्रांसक्षलीट Put in that name and give it back to you guys. But then, right? Anyhow, we Thursday morning also you have the session. I will be starting like 9:30 at least. So 10:30, 11:30, 12:30 until I will do that until that uh, time period. So next week my plan is uh, I will check that question, sales channel and purchase channel question number one and question number two that I have shared in the group. I will do that question. No need to take that much of time. Like I will take like 30 minutes since we have done this, and I am pretty sure you will do this definitely. So I will do that question uh, for 30 minutes. Then the remaining one and a half hours I will be taking it to uh, what we call cash receipt journal and cash payment journal. I don't think I have to take one and a half hours because it's so simple, right? And uh, for the remaining one hour I will be taking the homeworks to discuss the accounting equation and bank reconciliation because. 2013 ne level having a bank reconciliation part 2014 also having a bank reconciliation part so we can discuss that also so uh let me know any questions regarding this vat adjustment definitely prime entry books would be there sometimes because this has been already tested also the vat has been tested for company accounts clear any questions so far any questions so far Is it clear everything? Is it clear everything? Others that the B or B is that uh, student here? All right, are you the one? Right. So the my plan for the Thursday is that so make sure you are joining at nine thirty, yeah, not from ten thirty. Right. So we'll meet on the Thursday, yeah. So we'll discuss the rest of this and finish off the accounting question, bank reconciliation part. Right. Any questions? Let me know. Then homework is that the question two, question number one and question number two both. Huh? Right. We'll meet on the next Thursday, yeah. Huh? See you all.